Just thought I'd do a uh, an installment here on some Remington Derringers uh, that came out of a barn find hoard that uh, I have access to. Um, I'm going to cover two different types of Derringers in this installment. Um, the first type of Derringer is probably the most common Derringer that everyone's familiar with, and that is the Remington Elliott, or uh, it's referred to as the um, uh, the M9, uh, the Model 95 Derringer. Um, it's a two-shot, 41 caliber rimfire. Satisfied, Sheriff? Now drop your gun and go sit down. All right, everyone stand still. No one gets hurt. Come on, you. Um, this particular one that I'm holding up is an early model. It has no ejector on it. Um, and this particular, uh, Derringer was made, um, between 1865 and 1869. Um, it was one of the first model, uh, Remington Elliott's, uh, no ejector, um, 41 Rimfire. Now, uh, moving on, we have, um, several different variations of this Derringer. This particular model um, has uh, uh, wood grips. Uh, you can see it's engraved. Uh, it does have an ejector on it. Um, and these variations were made um, pre-1888. Again, here's, here's a second one. Um, this has hard rubber grips. Uh, it's not engraved. It does have, uh, you know, it, it, the nickeling on it's a little rough, but, you know, it's pre-1888. That's understandable. Um, here's a third model of that particular uh, variation, uh, with again, with uh, hard rubber grips, um, an ejector. And if you'll notice, the ejector's actually blued, uh, with the nickel finish. Um, it's, again, pre-1888 Remington. Um, fine example. I mean, that's a super example. And mind you, the, uh, the takedown lever right here, which flips it up, it is also blued as well, uh, which is, you know, I mean, I don't know if it's uncommon. I find it unique. Now, the third variation of the uh, the Model 95 Derringer that I have were basically, these items were made between 1888 and 1910. Um, the first one I'm showing you, and you can tell the, the variations on this as far as the years, all has to do with the markings on the top. Like uh, this one is... Uh, Remington Arms Company, Ilion, New York, where, let me backdate this, you'll, on this one, uh, kind of hard to make out on that, but basically the markings on the earlier ones are um, E. Remington, uh, New York, and it's got a patent date on it. So this one, uh, hard rubber grips, ejector, uh, pretty common, um, nickel plated. Now, the next two that I have are kind of interesting because, again, nothing uh, nothing over the top, <clears throat> nickel plated, blue ejector, blue takedown lever, mother of pearl grips, um, which are uh, in really good shape. They're not cracked, chipped. Um, these are, I mean, really nice. It's got a blued hammer on it a blued trigger spur, so um, nickel plated, uh, some blued accessories, mother of pearl grips, and I have a second uh, variation which is identical to the uh, last one I showed you. Again, blued controls, blued hammer, blued uh, trigger, mother of pearl grips um, in great shape. 
Um, again, these, these were made between 1888 and uh, 1910. Really no way to date the exact year of manufacturer, but all in all, uh, a really good example of a uh, two-shot uh, Derringer by Remington, uh, again, in 41 short rimfire cartridge. Um, the last example of the uh, M95 is this one. Now, this is interesting because this was made probably between, uh, from my estimation, between 1911 and 1922. It's actually a blued, it's an all blued gun, it has hard rubber grips. Um, again, these guns, I mean, they, they made them for years. They're all basically the same. Um, there's really no different variation other than the markings on them. But the fact that this is a blued example opposed to a nickel, which was more common, is interesting. Um, uh, again, it, it's, it's an interesting later variation. And they made these uh, Derringers um, all the way up until 1935. So... Um, these Derringers, and they've been reproduced over the years, but they, they, these are these are pretty uh, uh, common, standard, everyday, uh, the go-to two-shot over-under Derringer. I mean, Petrosoli makes repros of this. Uh, so, I mean, every there's been a dozen companies that have made reproduction Derringers of this design over the years. And you can buy them today. However, these are all original um, Remington-made Derringers all over, you know, anywhere between 100 and 150 years old. I mean, these are exquisite examples. And again, I go back to the fancy one um, with the engraving. Look at that. You know, I mean, it, that's it's got... I don't know if that's rosewood or walnut. It's kind of hard to tell. It's darkened. But, I mean, the engraving on this is beautiful. I mean, th this this would have cost a few extra dollars. I mean, these guns, I mean, when, when in you know, in, in the 1860s, 1870s, 1880s, I mean, you could buy these guns for, you know, $10, which was a lot of money back then. But, <clears throat> you know, if you wanted an engraved example, you're going to pay a little bit more. Again... If you want mother of pearl grips on it, you're going to pay a little bit more, you know, because, I mean, the, the fancier it gets, you know, the more you're going to pay. Now, with that being said, I'm going to go to a, another set of Derringers that I have, and these are what Remington calls the pocket vest Derringer, or... Um, what they referred to as the saw handle Derringer. And these, these are kind of rare. I mean, they only made like 17,000 of these between, um, I think it's like 1865 all the way up through 1888. Uh, Remington went through a bankruptcy in 1888, so a lot of these Derringers stopped production in 1888 and when they got through bankruptcy uh, some picked up some didn't this is one that did not pick up after 1888 now this is interesting um this is a 30 caliber rim fire and it's you cock the hammer back you have a breech block and you load the cartridge in in the uh you know in the in the breech there you put the breech block up and you're ready to fire. Now, this particular model is blued with a brass frame that is engraved, and I do believe these are rosewood grips. Um, I have another 30 caliber uh, rim fire model that is brass framed, nickel plated barrel, uh, rosewood grips. Again, same situation. It's got a little breech block that, you know flips down, you know, um, and these are not real common. Uh, these are actually, from a collector's point of view, very valuable. Collectors really like these. 
But with that being said, the last uh, pocket vest Derringer that I have is this one. This is a little bitty bastard. It's blued. You cock the hammer back. It does not have a breech block. It's 22 short. This is a 22 short pocket vest saw handled Derringer. Um, I, I find it a little awkward. It's so small and I have large hands. I mean, I know people in the, you know, late 1800s were smaller in stature. Uh, I find this a little difficult to manipulate, but for a 22 short rimfire pocket derringer that you literally fit into your vest pocket and you pulled it out, cocked the hammer, and, you know... I guess shot the dude that was two feet away from you. I mean, I that that's the purpose of this gun. Um, it's really interesting because I mean, it, uh, again, it's 22 short. This thing is is I mean, if you compare it to say the 30 caliber, you can see the difference. Uh, it's it's a lot smaller. Um, they're interesting. They're unique. Like I said, they only made like. On the high end, twenty thousand of them. Uh, they're, 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 it's a very low production run, but it's a success, a successful production run for Remington. Um, and they're, they're really unique. They're very desirable. They're very collectible. Um, all in all, uh, I think this is a awesome uh, Derringer uh, collection. Uh, I have more to come on this. I have more Derringers to review. Uh, this is the first installment on the Remington Derringer series. Um, but anyway, if you have uh, any comments, if you know any more information than I do on it, you want to leave comments, please leave them in the comment section. Um, we appreciate all feedback uh, that we get. Anyway, it's all about shooting guns and having fun. Everyone have a great day, and I will see you later.